Indeed, whatever was written in the past was written for our instruction, so that through patient endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, <clears throat> we would have hope. And may God, the source of patient endurance and encouragement, grant that you agree with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. History. What, what do you think of history? Do you like learning history? Do you not like learning history? All the past events, the good, the bad, the ugly. How do you feel about it? Sometimes we don't like history. Sometimes you try and ignore history. Sometimes you try to block it out completely. Sometimes you even try to erase history, the events that happened in the past. But what our Lord asks us to do this morning from those first few verses in Romans 15 is, is not to hide from it, not to wash it away, but really to embrace it and really to learn from the past. Because as it said there in Romans chapter 15, he has given us the past, the things that were written in the past, to instruct us. What our good Lord is doing is he is telling us it's the Bible history that is recorded for us, the past that he wants us to learn from. And that's what we're going to focus on. We're just going to focus on the Bible history events that happened throughout the world's history. And we are going to see what does the Lord God want to instruct us about? What does the Lord God want us to learn from all these events that happened in the past that he in loving care took time to have recorded and we're hopefully going to learn recorded for our benefit. And there are many things that we could look at in the Bible. I'm just going to choose a few. I'm going to start with, as hopefully you know now, my favorite, David. You think of David and what the Lord recorded for us about King David. David for us to learn. From David, you can learn of a man who will show you how to have strong and unshakable faith in the midst of one of the biggest struggles and challenges that a man would ever face, life in death, a boy versus a warrior. David went unflinchingly. Why? Because his confidence was unshakable at that moment in the good Lord who would give him the victory. God wants us to learn from David. When a great obstacle, and a great challenge, when a hardship comes, learn from David. You can also learn some negative things from David. You can learn that there are consequences for your sinful actions when you make the choice to carry out a lust-filled act, when you make the choice to go out and murder, when you make the choice to not discipline and raise your children. They, well, in David's case, led to incestuous behavior and revolt and murder. God's given us that for our instruction to learn from the past. You could say parenting mistakes. And what happens when you make the choice to ignore what God says? There are consequences. God has given us the past Judas. We can learn from Judas what happens when we think we are unlovable. What happens when we think our sin is too great to be forgiven by the almighty and loving God. We can learn from the past and see what happens when negative thoughts are only and always inside of our head. It can lead to very negative actions. <laughs> Death. Or Peter. The opposite of Judas. 
man who committed a great sin running away from his Lord and Savior Jesus, a man who denied knowing his Savior, a man who was crushed with his shame and guilt, yet what does the Lord instruct us? Through Peter, even his sin of three times and even calling down curses on himself. I don't know the man. And even he could be forgiven. God's given us the past to instruct. One more. Because the past is what the Lord wants us to learn from. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Lord using Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego gives us an example and a lesson of what happens when three men stand up for what is right instead of following a sinful action. It can have consequences. The Lord teaches us that sometimes being a faithful follower of his can have very nasty effects in your life. You remember what happened to them? They were thrown into this fiery furnace that was so hot the soldiers who threw them in died from the heat. We can learn there's consequences for following Jesus. And at the same time, from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we can learn that the good Lord, if he so chooses, can spare you from those consequences. As he did them. They didn't die. They were brought out to the shock and amazement of the people. God can protect you, even in what seems certain death situations. Learn from the past, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because God has given it to you for your instruction. But what happens? What happens when you get sat down like or sit down or seated down. I don't know what you guys are doing, but you're just hanging out. When you come into the church and you sit, there we go, sit down in the pews, and every Sunday you're going to hear a Bible lesson, and what happens? You get bored, heard it, tired of it. Can't you share another example? We got it. David's your favorite, and says, got it. You like the lust part, got it. Find something else so church is exciting and not boring and repetitive. We get bored when we are hearing the same Bible lessons over and over again, and we say, it's not for me. We start to tune out the guy up there talking because, well, I heard it. I can probably say it again. David, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We get bored with the past. Then we have this nasty little habit inside of us is we're a little arrogant sometimes. David fell for that sin. There he goes on David again. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in a no-win situation, taken over by another country, serving a foreign king that was not a, a good king. We're not in that situation. There's no way I would be tempted like David by a beautiful woman or by a handsome man. There is no way I would ever have to make a life and death decision based on my faith like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These things don't apply to me. I don't struggle with them. They're not my current reality. Therefore, I wonder if the Packers will beat the Eagles today. Probably not. What do we do? We move on to other things. Or we look at that history that God has given us for our instruction, and we say times have changed. People's opinions of what is right and wrong has changed. In fact, they're making laws about what is right and what is wrong, and it has changed. Therefore, what is written in the past is no longer relevant for me today. God has given us the past. He has given us his word for our hearing, for our learning, for our instruction, for our growth, for our saving. 
Yet we are so capable of coming up with any and every excuse not to pay attention, coming up with any and every excuse to wipe those pages clean of what God has said, to bury it, to hide it, to run from it, to pretend like it hasn't happened. When you're no longer fed with that living bread of God's word, when you choose to eat the food of this world instead of the food that God has so lovingly given you, what happens? Your faith, it starves. And what happens? You stay starving long enough, you will, you will die. Don't run. Don't ignore the past the history that God has given you in the pages of Scripture because all 66 books, they were written in the past to teach and instruct and to save. Don't jeopardize your salvation. Here again what the Lord tells us through the Apostle Paul. <clears throat> <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Indeed, Whatever was written in the past was written for our instruction, said through patient endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we would have hope. The good, the bad, and the ugly. God recorded it all for us. He recorded some of his most faithful followers committing some of the most heinous sins that the mind can conceive. He recorded the wonderful acts of faith that could be done for your instruction. Broad paintbrush, if I may. The entire Israelite history from the time of, we'll start with Abraham, until all the kingdoms were destroyed. What is God teaching you? We could break it down to the two most basic teachings of Scripture, law and gospel. What is God teaching you? His patience. The continue rebel continual rebelliousness of the Israelites is well documented throughout history. What else is well documented? The patience and the love of God throughout history. Just looking at those Israelites, all God did was warn, all God did was show love, all God did was show patience, and now it's for your benefit. Because what does the past teach you about the Lord God? He is not quick to anger. How many years from the time that God warned the people in Genesis about the coming flood to the time he actually sent the flood? I don't know. Prangy, do you know Pastor Prangy? I can't remember. From, it started, was it 100 some years? Huh, cool. Yeah. 120? Yeah. Exactness. 120, man. 120 years. Talk about patience that the Lord God had with his creation as they continued to rebel against him. He's like, guys, guys, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. But ah, they didn't listen. And then finally the Lord God acted. And how many years from the time of the promise in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve made that decision? Well, God, you're stupid. The snake is smarter than you, and so are we. So therefore, we're going to eat. Immediately after that, the Lord promised to send the offspring of the woman as we're hearing in our readings, looking forward, or remembering the past, that first coming of Christ, and looking forward to that second coming of Christ, everything in that Bible is written to instruct you to learn so that you can know what God has done, his patience, and more importantly than that, his love and the promise of a Savior, his love and what he tells us in Isaiah uh, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, you, 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 you have been healed. There is the beauty 
of what God has written. Isaiah was written 700 years before the birth of Christ, and Jesus, some 2,000 years ago, last walked the earth. There is history that has changed your life. It is that love of Christ displayed to bring you ultimate and free and full healing. From every single one of your sins. By his wounds you have been healed. In his blood you have the redemption of all your sins. And so you think back to the sins that David did and, and, and um, Adam and Eve did and think of the sins that you have committed and what does God tell you? It is there in that manger, that babe, that every one of your sins was placed. It was there in that manger that that babe was going to live and to grow and then to die, to completely forgive you every sin that you have ever committed. If you walk away from the past, you will walk away from that beautiful story of God's love, of your forgiveness, of your salvation. Treasure that past, that history that has transformed your life in Christ, making you God's own child. Treasure that message of Jesus as the God of hope, verse 15, and I'll just read it to you. Now may the God of hope fill you with complete joy and peace. 13, sorry, as you continue to believe so that you will overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what the message of Jesus does. That's what the patience that God does. That's what the care that God gives. That's what the history that God blesses you with. It gives you hope. It gives you courage as you face the future. Because like David, you have no idea what is going to happen in your life. When he woke up that morning, oh, maybe he had an inkling, I'm going to go check out this war that's going on because it looks kind of fun. And then he went and faced that mammoth Goliath. I don't know what Goliaths you are going to face in your life. Medical, health, relational, whatever. But go with the confidence of David, knowing that the Lord God is going to be with you, knowing that the Lord God, no matter what the outcome is of whatever situation you are wrestling with, is going to be good and pleasing for you because God himself promises you that go with the courage of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that no matter what this world yells and screams at you, stay faithful and loyal to your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and watch the blessings overflow. But you would not have that hope. You would not have that peace and the hecticness of your life if you did not cling to the history that God has given you in his word. Learn from the past. Treasure that gift of Jesus. And let him bless your future. Amen.